What if this was a video game, and what if it came out in 1998 or 1999? That would have been pretty cool, right? Well, it almost became a reality in a highly anticipated game that looks set to pick up the torch dropped by Wing Commander and X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. Then, just months before its release, it was cancelled amid backroom corporate deals. This is the story of Babylon 5 Into the Fire. But before we get into that, I just want to shout out Matthias from Sweden, who backs this channel at the highest level on Patreon. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can find a link to the Patreon in the description. And with that, well, let's dig in. The early to mid-90s was the golden era of space combat games. Take Wing Commander 3 as an example. Released in 1994, it brought fully 3D textured ships to the PC plus full motion video cutscenes, which, let's not forget, starred Mark Hamill. Does this war agree with you? Yeah, yeah, like a pair of busted wing flaps. But it's great to see you, buddy. Now, obviously, it's not stunning today, but this was 1994. Most PC gamers were still using DOS and a monitor with a maximum resolution of 640x480. However, by the end of the 90s, the genre had reached a bit of a dead end. Wing Commander withered after series creator Chris Roberts left to form his own studio, and the Star Wars titles from Totally Games, such as X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, they had become a bit repetitive. Newcomers like Free Space and Independence War impressed critics, but they were also huge commercial flops. I mean, we're talking just tens of thousands of units sold within their first few months. And that brings us to Babylon 5 Into the Fire. Though the TV series had reached the end of its run, it remained ripe for a video game release thanks to several made-for-TV movies, the last of which was released in 2002, and also a spin-off TV show called Crusade, which was much hyped ahead of its release. Science fiction fans still loved Babylon 5, and a video game in that universe seemed an excellent way to tap into their interest. Of course, there was competition from the new Star Wars trilogy, but LucasArts made room for a Babylon 5 game by ditching PC-only titles made by Totally Games and leaning into the console-centric titles developed by Factor 5, the studio behind Rogue Squadron. These did receive ports to the PC, but they weren't great. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about the Star Wars space combat games, I actually have an entire video devoted to that. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well as in the video right now. I also want to take a quick moment to thank this channel's supporters on Patreon. This includes Travis Trellick, Zach Garcia, A Simple Device, Kale Gerlich, and of course Matthias who supports this channel at the highest level. Okay, so Babylon 5 was a name that carried some weight, but there was more to the hype than just the license. The game was in development at Sierra's Yosemite Entertainment, and the team working on Into the Fire included veterans like Dan Foy, who worked on dozens of Sierra's most memorable adventure games, Mark Huggins, who led animation on many of those same titles, and John Trager, who led the QA team for newer Sierra classics, including Police Quest SWAT and the first two Gabrielle Knight games. Previews of Into the Fire boasted about its top-notch flight model that would split the difference between realism and fun. A preview of the game published in Computer Gaming World said that the game would let players switch between a normal flight mode, which would control like an aircraft, and an alternative mode with realistic Newtonian physics. In this mode, players could swing a fighter on its axis while maintaining its path of flight, a maneuver often depicted in the TV show. This same preview also promised cutting-edge graphics. The show's CGI was impressive stuff for the mid-90s, and Yosemite Entertainment promised to bring that same awe to the game. The studio cooperated with the show's effects team to import the exact 3D models used in the show to the game, though with some cuts to polygon counts, of course. Large battles were also planned, too, with up to 350 ships in the largest missions. And then there's that final piece of the puzzle, the story. The game was created in close collaboration with Babylonian Productions, the company that produced the show. The game would use the show's music library along with some new tracks and include full motion video sequences with some of the original show's actors and sets. The game even promised to deliver a digital Babylon 5 encyclopedia that would in some way provide players with added detail about the show's universe. Of course, many games that generate a lot of hype turn out to be duds, so it's impossible to say whether or not Into the Fire would truly live up to its promises. Still, I think it's clear that for many space combat fans, as well as fans of the Babylon 5 franchise, Into the Fire provided a reason for hope. If it was successful, it might have reignited interest in the genre, and could have provided a new way to keep the story of Babylon 5 moving forward. Unfortunately, that's not how it worked out. 
Now I'm sure you're wondering, if everything was going so well, why was the game cancelled? I think it's fair to lay the blame on every gamer's favorite arch enemy, corporate bullshit. You see, Sierra Online was sold by its founders Ken and Roberta Williams to a company called CUC International in 1996. To make matters worse, Sierra co-founder Ken Williams, who stayed on with the company after its sale, was pushed aside and ignored by its new overlords. CUC promised it would split the new software business between Williams and Bob Davidson, head of Davidson Associates, another software company acquired by CUC, but that turned out to be a lie. Instead, Davidson was given the reins. Williams, writing in his book, Not All Fairy Tales Have Happy Endings, is plenty bitter about what happened, saying that, quote, CUC agreed to Sierra's demands, but they were just saying whatever it took to get the deal done, with no intention of following through. Williams stayed on to try and insulate Sierra from its new management, but he eventually resigned in the fall of 1997. With him out of the company, the remains of Sierra Online were left unprotected and then the company became a pit of red ink. CUC, now disintegrating in the wake of its fraud scandal, sold Sierra to Havaz Interactive in 1998, which turned around and made major cuts in February of 1999. This included the closure of Yosemite Entertainment, the studio working on Babylon 5 into the fire. Surprisingly, this wasn't quite the end of the project. The game was passed like a hot potato to Sierra's headquarters in Bellevue, Washington, and Sierra showed the game as late as Gen Con in August of 1999, where it was promised to be near the end of its development. But then, in September, just one month later, the press release hit magazines and websites without warning. A reorganization was happening at Sierra effective immediately. It killed multiple titles, including not only Babylon 5 Into the Fire, but also a pair of games based on the Lord of the Rings license, one of which was a massively multiplayer role-playing game tentatively titled Middle Earth. A radio interview conducted with Mark Hudgens and Dan Foy that occurred just days after the layoffs and was republished a few years ago on YouTube channel Metal Jesus Rocks provides some more insight into the cancellation. According to Hudgens and Foy, however, it seemed that at some point during development, Sierra Online's belief in the franchise's potential changed. Here is a clip of the interview. The thing that changed, though, was kind of the um, attitude towards the franchise. Um, I know initially the idea was this was going to be a long-term franchise, so you kind of had to invest up front, and the idea was, okay, the first game is going to be expensive, um, but beyond that, uh, mission packs, sequels, etc., plus building the franchise and stepping out into, say, adventure games or real-time strategy games or whatever else within that license, that it would pay for itself, essentially, in that sense. I think somewhere along the line, they decided not to do that. The cancellation was a real shock to the developers who felt the project was just months away from release. So much so, in fact, that many of them split away and formed an entirely new studio called Sector 14 Studios in an attempt to complete the game. The studio was able to find a publishing partner in Codemasters, who then approached Sierra Online to try to buy the rights to the project. It seemed like an easy decision after all, Sierra had no intention of completing the game, but instead Sierra refused to sell the project. In what was perhaps a last ditch effort to generate interest, a playable alpha version containing several levels was leaked online, but with Babylon 5's popularity now fading into memory, no publisher was interested. You can still find it available today, and I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. I didn't have any luck getting the game to run, and I also will warn you the sources of this file are not exactly legitimate, so download it at your own risk. To make matters even worse, the Babylon 5 spin-off show Crusade was cancelled and the production company behind the show finally closed down, taking with it writers, actors, sets, and 3D models used in the original show. This meant that Sector 14 Studios couldn't start from scratch, even if it wanted to. But that's not to say fans of the series have been entirely lacking a way to play a game based on Babylon 5. Several total conversion mods have appeared for numerous games, including Homeworld 2, Free Space 2, Sins of a Solar Empire, Star Trek Armada, and many others. There's even a short, unauthorized fan-made game, Babylon 5 I've Found Her, Danger and Opportunity, which was released in 2003. You can still download it today, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. It's actually a pretty decent game, although rather short, with graphics that look acceptable even by modern standards, and pretty impressive in-engine cinematics and even decent voice EAS acting. Perseus and EAS Athena. What happened? Alpha 2 here. You're not gonna believe this, sir. The quality of the game really shows the passion fans have for the franchise. That passion remains to this day, 
and there is a new Babylon 5 reboot planned to release in 2023, so maybe there's a chance we will finally see an official Babylon 5 game. But for now, this is the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a like if you liked it and to subscribe if you loved it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.